Who put the glad in gladiator? Hercules, whose daring deeds are great theater. Hercules, is he bold? No one braver. Is he sweet? My favorite flavor. Hercules. No, I was wrong. You're finding your inner Disney adult. <laughs> You're lucky I didn't start from the beginning of the gospel truth. <laughs> because I could have. I know that entire inter interlude by heart. And I could have started there. Many aeons ago. <laughs> back when the world was new. The planet Earth was down on its luck. Okay, but if you want that odd merging of the Greco-Roman uh, tellings of things, there you go. Yeah. And everywhere gigantic brutes called titans ran amok. And also getting the, com the mythology completely wrong. <sighs> Hera and Zeus's relationship in that movie could not be further from the truth. <laughs> Literally could not be further. There is no physical way that it could have been more different than the actual mythology. There isn't. You could not. That's not wrong under the Greek telling, or it's not correct under the Greek telling, not correct under the Roman telling, and not correct under the later Percy Jackson telling. Mm -hmm. The three most popular tellings of Greek mythology. <laughs> anyway, so I'm, I'm sure you've guessed at this point, but we're doing Heracles, Hercules, Both Alcides, Alcius. <laughs> I can keep going. Um, so we're, we're going to get a little... We're going to get a little esoteric at, at times today because technically he's a he's a mythological character. So so there's there's a lot of, you know, versions and kind of difference changes going along. So if I don't mention something, it's not because I don't know it. It's just because I didn't think it was relevant or I really didn't think that it was sort of nece necessary for me to mention it because I cannot possibly do like mention every single thing that has to do with Hercules and Heracles all at once. Um, however, I do want to make the note that we will go over a little bit of Her Heracles and Hercules. And the biggest difference between the two is that Hercules is a Roman, essentially a Roman deity, like a, a deity of a Roman cult. And Hercules is often identified with some later Roman emperors. And there was an actual cult of Hercules in Rome that essentially worshipped him as a divine being due to all of the things he had done in life. So, like, this is a cult figure, and there was a cult for him in Greece as well. So, we've got both the myth, the myth, and then we also have, like, the cult worship of him. Unlike Disney would lead you to believe, Heracles is not, in fact, the product of a happy marriage and union between Zeus and Hera, who merely had his power sapped from him by being fed poison by a couple of small pastel-colored baby demons that were on a mission from Hades. <laughs> uh, Hercules is a result of one of Zeus's many, many affairs, and at this point I am just going to keep saying Hercules because that rolls off the tongue easier, and unfortunately in the West, because of Disney, and the common like popularity of Roman sources, Hercules is what most of us grow up with, not Heracles. And so if I keep trying to switch back between them, I'm just going to get confused. Those damn Romans. So we're going to go with Hercules. But he is the son of Zeus and the woman Alcmene. Alcmene was actually married to um, Amphitryon. And Zeus was like, hey, she's pretty. I'm going to make her pregnant. As Zeus does. And then Hera was like, I don't want this kid born. And the kid was like, get fucked. I'm being born. <laughs> as Hera does. I, genuinely, as as Hera does. That is 100% what happens. <laughs> so, the most famous of the stories about Heracles is the, tw the story of the Twelve Labors which are the sort of the 12 things that he has to, to go through. Um, he is one of the Hellenic Thonic heroes, but we don't actually have a tomb identified as one of his. Um, a lot of Greek Chthonic heroes, we actually do have like, tombs for, places where they were buried. We do not have one for Heracles. 
Um, but he, he is also uh, both a hero and a god, which could be why. It could just be that we don't know where there was a tomb ascribed to him. Most of the Greek heroes did not become gods per se, but Heracles did in most versions. Um, and so he does have, there's a festival to him. Things are sacrificed to him. First, he was sacrificed to as a hero, then um, Catholic libation, and then as a god upon an altar. And so he is pretty much the closest you would get to a sort of demigod. Like, throw away the idea of demigod, half mortal, half god that you get from Percy Jackson, and think more that this was a god who did not start out as a god, but became a god through some way or another. So he is not born a god, but he becomes and or develops the power of of a god in mythology and religion, and a similar cult-like status to other deities. Um, Walter Burkett has claimed that he believes that the story of Heracles actually originates as early as Neolithic hunter-gatherer traditions and shamanistic journeys to the underworld, and that it's possible that the myths around him were based on several people whose accomplishments became um, conglomerated and exaggerated with time. And to be fair, if he was a Neolithic hunter-gatherer tradition that stuck around and evolved, that's a lot of time for stories to change and evolve. So it would actually, it's not out of the realm of possibility. Um... Heracles is a culture hero who was accepted into the Olympian pantheon during classical times, which creates some canonical difficulties with the Odyssey because Odysseus encounters Heracles in Hades as a ghost, but Heracles should not have been in Hades as a ghost if he is a god in the Olympian pantheon. So... Very obviously, not all versions of the story agree with one another, and you have to keep in mind, Homer's Iliad and Odyssey were meant to be these really amazing poetical and dramatic sort of stories that people told again and again and again, and often changed one telling to another, and we only have sort of one or two versions of them. So keep in mind, this might have changed from version to version, and we just happen to have the one where he is unfortunately, clashingly, in the underworld as a ghost when he shouldn't be. But at the same time, it kind of makes sense because he sailed, theor theoretically, Heracles sailed with the Argonauts, you know, and participated in all these great things, so. I mean, it kind of makes sense, though. Like, the, the version of the story you're probably going to hear is from the people that told it most reverently. It's going to be the people that worshipped him as a god, and then you have the Odyssey, which is... Well, I, I mean, really, same people. really, what's Fate Grand Order but just a multi-continental version of the Iliad? A I gathering. Break down that argument. No, I'm uh, not saying you're wrong, but no, no, I would no, love no, to see you, like elaborate on that. Hear me out. A gathering of all of the greatest heroes of history together to fight on one or another side of the same battle: Achilles, Odysseus. Heracles, Patroclus, Hector, Paris, all of these great and powerful heroes gathered together to fight. And then in the Odyssey, Odysseus travels to the underworld, meets them, and so many more. And then if you go on to read Virgil's Aeneid, which is a spiritual successor to this series, the story of Aeneid was the story of Aeneas was known to the Greeks, but Virgil writes the Aeneid. In the Aeneid, Aeneas goes to the underworld and is greeted by all of these great heroes of the Trojan people, while Odysseus is greeted by the greatest heroes of the Greek people. See, now I need you to actually play and read Fate Grand Order and then write an entire ass video essay making that comparison and <laughs> if you can maintain it. I could. You don't have enough time for that. Not right now, but I could. <laughs> so, Her Heracles was celebrated during the... Heracles' is cult had a couple of main worship periods. The first was the festival of the Heraclea, which commemorated the death of Heracles, which was held on the second day of the month of Metagnation, which fell in either late July or early August. And according to archaeologists, we actually have an extant 
temple to Heracles dating to 21 BC in Egypt um, that is linked to a Ptolemaic description of the island of Malta. So keep in mind this Heracles cult is widespread throughout the entire Mediterranean at this time. Like Greece, Rome, Egypt, according to some sources. Um, it's highly likely that there were cultic temples in potentially even the Levant at this point and in northern Africa. Ding dong. I've come to tell you about our Lord and Savior, Heracles. <laughs> uh, several Greek polis provided sanctuaries for Heracles, recognizing him as either a god or a hero. Sacrifices were made to him during festivals. And... Um, see um what was i gonna say one of the reasons why the cult of heracles was so incredibly popular was because it's essentially i don't want to be that person but it's jesus before jesus because it's a hero ascending to heaven based on his suffering and then coming back as a sort of deified savior that one could pray to it's not a perfect comparison, but it, 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 I mean, it is one of those sort of things. Um, interestingly, much like uh, cults of Apollo throughout Greece, cults of Heracles were often uh, historically and sort of culturally sustained by absorbing local cult figures into the cult of Heracles and then associating their deeds with his, with his which kept the belief fresh in the minds of people and kept sort of uh, kept uh, people coming back to his temples. Uh, it's generally assumed that he presided over gymnasiums and uh, military training for men. You know, sort of this masculine male figure of the ultimate fighter. Heracles was adopted as a patron deity of many ancient towns, which you would expect. A lot of ancient towns, pretty much every ancient town had, had a deity. So Heracles is often associated with extraordinary strength, courage, sexual prowess with males and females ingenuity and My sexual legend yep and his wits um it, there are examples of him in his 12 labors and in other stories where when his strength uh failed him in completing these tasks he would actually turn to his wits and be successful a barbarian with wisdom who would have thought none of my characters uh like i said alongside hermes he's the patron of gymnasia and palestre and iconographically, he's often depicted with lion pelts and a giant club. However, despite all this depiction of him that associates with sort of more violent activities and athletic pastimes, in general, he's also regarded with a rather playful nature as someone who would often relax from labors and play games with children and enjoy that greatly. He's attributed to have made the world safe for mankind and is therefore a benefactor of man known to be extremely passionate and emotional and he's a but he's also regarded as a terrible enemy whom people do not want to cross because many people crossed him in myth like Augeas, Neleus, and Laomedon who all found out that you should not cross Heracles. In Sophocles the Trachinae he's also depicted as being kind of cold because he has this thing where he's... So he's married to Deonera, right? That's his wife. But he threatens to bring a second woman under the roof and doesn't seem to care about her in Sophocles' play, which shows a, sort, a certain sense of disregard for his wife's feelings. Um, but in the works of Euripides that describe him, most of his actions were driven by forces outside of rational human control, and uh, Euripides attributed divine causation to his madness, which kind of creates problems within his character because it essentially makes him sort of a blank slate that the gods impose their will on. And that means that nothing he does is actually bad. It's just the will of the gods, which not great for a character who's going to be deified for the strength of his character. So it's not perfect. So... Remember we started with Alcimini, right? So Zeus wanted Al Alcimini really badly. And so 
he ordered the god of the sun, Helios, to not rise in the sky for three days so that he could have a longer night with Alcimene, where he made love to her, disguising himself as her husband, Amphitryon, who had come home early from the war. He did, in fact, return later the same night. Um, and Alcimene actually became pregnant with his son during the same night, which is an early Greek example of heteropaternal superfecundation. Uh, a woman carrying twins sired by different fathers. We see this also in Castor and Pollux and Helen and Clytemnestra. Yep. Once again, both because of Zeus. <laughs> you see, all women have a second womb for Zeus. Mm -hmm. So Heracles' very existence proved Zeus's illicit affairs and Hera... Hera in mythology is often known to conspire against the mortal offspring as revenge for infidelity against her. His mortal brother, his twin, was known as Iphicles, who was the father who eventually became the father of Heracles' chari charioteer, um, Eolaus. On the night that they were born, Hera tried to persuade Zeus to swear an oath that the child born that night to a member of the house of Perseus would become high king. Hera did this because, while Hercules was to be born a descendant of Perseus, so was Eurystheus. Once the oath was sworn, Hera, sl Hera slowed the birth of him and Iphicles by forcing the goddess of childbirth to sit cross-legged with her clothing tied in knots, trapping the young boys in the womb, while she also, at the same time, caused Eurystheus to be born prematurely, making him high king instead of Heracles. Um... To be honest, she did try to permanently delay his birth. Yeah, poor woman. Um, but that he, they found a way around that. <laughs> they essentially tricked her. Um, Alchemini, in fear of Hera's revenge, right, exposed the infant Her Heracles to being taken by her, but. Uh, he was taken and brought to Hera by his half-sister, Athena, who played a role as the protectress of heroes in Greek mythology. Athena is the protectress of heroes, especially those who display wit and cunning and the desire to solve their battles in a way other than unga bunga hit big. Hera did not recognize Her Heracles, interestingly enough, and therefore nursed him out of pity as an abandoned child. Um... But Heracles caused her pain during this process, and she pushed him away, which in some stories it's said that her milk sprayed across the sky, forming the Milky Way. But by ingesting this divine milk, he had acquired supernatural powers, at which point Athena brought him back to his mother, and he was raised by his parents with his mortal brother. Initially, he was gave, given the name Alcides, but he was only re renamed Heracles in an unsuccessful attempt to mollify Hera, with Heracles meaning Hera's pride or Hera's glory. Uh, when he and his twin were eight months old, Hera attempted to send two snakes into the children's chamber to kill them, um, but Heracles just picked them up and just... How's Heracles do? Bye-bye, snakey. Uh, his nurse found him playing with the two dead snakes on his cot. Ugh, that's I would not want to find a child. Yeah. So um, um, Amphit Amphitryon, his father, sent for the seer Tiresias, who prophesied that he would vanquish numerous monsters and have a pretty interesting future. So Heracles had a rather fraught youth. Um, he was pretty notorious for not being incredibly patient when it came to the arts, um, and sort of traditional learning, um, because we know that he killed his music tutor, Linus, with his own lyre, at which point his father sent him to tend cattle on a mountain, uh, where we get the allegory, the choice of Heracles, which was told to us by the sophist Prodicus in Xenophon's Memorabilia. Uh, it said here he was visited by vice and virtue and offered the choice between a pleasant and easy life or a severe but glorious life, and he chose the latter. This ethicized Heracles over the 5th century BC. Later in Thebes, once he returned from living on this mountain, he would marry King Creon's daughter, Megara. Remember, I mentioned that he had another wife before, Deonera? We haven't gotten to Deonera yet, because what happens to Megara is horrifying. So, Hera, 
in a fit of rage, induces madness into Heracles, which, and, and in, in the throes of this madness, he murders his wife and children. After this subsides and is cured by um, Antichirus, the founder of Antichira, he realizes what he, had done, what he had done, killing his wife and children, and he sought out the Oracle of Delphi. Um, this oracle was guided by Hera. He was directed to serve under King Eurystheus. Remember Eurystheus? The man that she conspired, the other descendant of Perseus, to get elected as high king instead of Heracles, who it should have been? So she tells Eurystheus that he must serve Eurystheus for ten years, performing any task. Eurystheus gives Heracles ten labors, but after completing them, Eurystheus adds two more, resulting in the twelve labors of Hercules. Um, according to myth, he would be purified of sin and become a god and be granted immortality if he succeeded in all twelve of these labors. Um, there are different, there are different parts and tellings in mythology. Uh, some traditions say that his madness happens at a later time and that the, it was not the cause for him undertaking the 12 labors. Um, and some say that the reason for him undertaking the 12 labors was because Zeus sought him out. Zeus sought out Hera, making her promise that if Heracles completed the 12 labors, he would become immortal. So, and then in Euripides' play, Heracles, um, him being driven to madness and killing his wife and children happens after the completion of the Twelve Labors. So the ancient Greek philosophers and poets and writers do not agree on what point in the story this happened, but they do agree that at one point Hera drives him mad. He kills his wife and children, and he has to complete ten labors for Eurystheus, who then cheats him and adds two more, and the result of him completing these labors will be divine immortality and deification. So, tell me about those 12 labors. So, the first, and this is associated with his iconography, the lion's pelt. His first task was to slay the Nemean lion, which was a legendary lion attacking the city of Nemea. Um, and the Nemean lion was said to have, what was it, um, skin so tough it couldn't be pierced. Like, the Nemean's lion's claws were like iron. They, they were so strong. So he slays the Nemean lion, right? And then he wears its skin as a cloak. So in most depictions, it'll show him wearing the skin of a lion tied with the paws under his neck. And that's the, the Nemean lion's cloak, or it'll have the head of a lion over his head. The second, uh, the second labor is to slay the Lernian hydra, a nine-headed beast that lived in a swamp near Lernea. Hera had sent it, hoping that it would destroy his home city because she thought it was invincible. But he got help from his brother's son, Aeolus, defeating the monster by and then dipping his arrows in its poisoned blood, making them venomized for future use. His third was to capture the golden hind of Artemis, not to kill, but to catch. This was a deer that was rel that was very sacred to Artemis, and as because he couldn't kill it, it was an especially difficult task. He ended up chasing it for over a year, finally finally wearing it out to the point of exhaustion. At which point Artemis would intervene, but Heracles explained his situation for her, and she allowed him to take it and present it alive to Eurystheus. The fourth was to capture the Aramanthian boar, which was a giant boar that was on the loose, just rampaging. So Eurystheus told Heracles to catch it and bring it to Mycenae. Um, he caught it and brought it to Mycenae. Then that's... Having pork chops tonight. <laughs> pork. The fifth was to clean the Augean stables in a single day. And this one's pretty famous because it's there were 3,000 cattle in these stables who had been who had poisoned shit that were a gift to Augeus by Helios, the sun god. So Heracles was supposed to clean the stables of all these diseased feces in a single day. And it wasn't the sort of thing where he could just like scoop the shit out so what he ended up doing was he diverted the rivers uh pineos and alfeos into the stables washing them clean with river water by digging giant ditches on both sides of the stables which is honestly pretty smart like make something else do the work for you of course he's still superhuman that he managed to divert the paths of two rivers to clean out some stables 
So the sixth task was slaying the Stymphalian birds, who were man-eating birds near Lake Stymphalia, which is located in northern Arcadia. Athena gave him a rattle, which was meant to frighten them into flight, which he was then able to use that to shoot at them with uh, those venomous arrows and then bring back these dead man-eating venomous arrow shot birds to Eurystheus. The seventh was to capture the Cretan bull, the father of the Minotaur, who roamed around Knossos on Crete. The bull itself, according to mythology, embodied the rage of Poseidon at having his gift to Minos diverted instead of sacrificing. So he captured it and he carried it on his shoulders to Eurystheus in Tiryns. And Eurystheus released it at that point where it wandered into Marathon and it would then proceed to terrorize Marathon until eventually Theseus had to kill it in a different myth. His next task was to steal the horses from Diomedes stables. Uh, these horses of Diomedes are, according to myth, trained to feed on human flesh. What he did was he fled King Diomedes to the animals and then bound their mouths shut and then took them to Eurystheus. His ninth was to obtain the girdle of Hippolyta, the queen of the Amazons. The girdle was given to Hippolyta by her father, Ares. He and his companions who traveled with him to fetch this girdle, uh, well, Hera ordered the Amazons to attack them, but that didn't work. And he ended up securing the girdle and taking it to Eurystheus. His tenth task, and what was supposed to be his final one, was to obtain the cattle of the monster Geryon. So there was a herd of cattle that was guarded by a dog called Orthrus, who had two heads, which belonged to a three-headed giant named Geryon in Erethea. When traveling there, he passed the Libyan desert, and because the desert was so hot, he shot an arrow at Helios, the sun. And Helios was like, you got balls, kid. So he gave him a giant cup, which Heracles used to find Orthrus. He killed a, a, the, the, and the herdsman Ertion and the owner Geryon. He killed Orthrus and Ertion with his club and Geryon with a poisoned arrow, then herding the cattle away and taking them to Eurystheus. Now at this point, Eurystheus set two more additional tasks. The first was to steal the golden apples of the Hesperides. Um, remember when we were doing... King Arthur. And I made the comment that there are like three kind of three different golden apples in Greek mythology because there's the golden apples of Atlanta, there's the golden apples, uh, the golden apple, well, we don't know if it was a golden apple, but the apple of discord. And then there's the golden apples of the Hesperides. And the golden apples of the Hesperides have similar mythological sort of attributions to the apples of. Idun in Norse mythology. Yeah. So the Hesperides, um, the golden apples of the Hesperides were guarded by Ladon, who was a hundred headed dragon in a sacred garden. Uh, so the first thing Heracles had to do was find the garden. So he asked the ancient sea god Nereus. And while he was journeying towards the garden, he came across Prometheus. He shot the eagle eating Prometheus's liver, and in turn, Prometheus helped Heracles, saying, telling him that Atlas would know where the garden was. Atlas offered to help him get the apples if Heracles would hold up the skies while he was gone, because Atlas's punishment as a titan was to hold up the skies forever. Unfortunately, Atlas tricked him and didn't return. However, Heracles managed to trick him back and get Atlas to take the burden of the heavens once again, then managing to take the apples and bring them to Eurystheus in Mycenae. His final task was to bring back Cerberus. Um, he used he he had the souls of the underworld convince Hades to let him hand over the dog if Heracles used no weapons in capturing Cerberus. So Heracles succeeded, took Cerberus to Mycenae, but that really just made Eurystheus terrified of him. And I'm going to be honest at this point, Eurystheus has just been shown time and time again that Heracles is just super fucking human. Like, 
every single one of these feats was worthy of death. They were supposed to all be impossible. They were all supposed to kill him. He was supposed to die at every single one of these tasks. Hence, 12 lives. Like, this man just kept kept going. You know? Like I don't... Cat mixed with a cockroach. Mm-hmm. So, beyond the 12 labors of Hercules, he has several other mythological attributions. At one point, he falls in love with Princess Iola of Oecalia, um, and King Eurytus promised Iola to whoever could beat his sons in an archery contest, which Heracles won, but uh, Eurytus abandoned his promise. His advances were spurned by the king and his sons, except for Iola's brother, Ephetus. Heracles killed the king and all of his sons, excluding Ephetus, and took Iole with him. Ephetus would then become Hercules' best friend. However, once again, Hera drove Heracles mad. He threw Ephetus over the city wall and into his death. Um, he would then purify himself through three more years of servitude, but this time to Queen Omphala of Lydia. Now, Omphala, the queen of Lydia, um, he served for three years, and this was a penalty for murder imposed by the Delphic Oracle at the time, Xenocleia. He was her slave for a year, forced to do woman's work and wear woman's clothes while she wore the skin of the Nemean lion and carried his olive wood club. And after some time, she freed him and married him. Uh, sources say that a son was born to them. Uh, we don't actually know his name. But at that point, mischievous wood spirits stole his weapons and he punished them by tying them into the ground with their faces pointed down. However, during this time in his life, he was walking through sort of the wilderness and was set upon by the Dryopes. Now, Apollonius of Rhodes in the Argonautica says that Heracles had killed their king, um, Theodamus, over, the, over Theodamus's bulls and made war upon them because they gave no, because they didn't have justice in their lives. Eventually, after the death of their king, they would give in and offer him Prince Hylas. Hylas was took on as his weapons bearer, and a few years later, Heracles and Hylas would join the crew of the Argo, becoming Argonauts. However, they, they only participated in part of the journey because when they stopped in Mycia, Hylas was kidnapped by the nymphs, and Hercules, searched, and Hercules spent a lot of time searching for him, but Hylas fell in love with the nymphs and never showed up again, or in some versions drowned, and as a result of this refusal to leave Hylas, the Argo would leave without both Heracles and Hylas and continue on its journey. So he was an Argonaut, but not for a whole lot of time. So, after he'd obtained the cattle of Geryon, uh, remember he had to transport the cattle back to uh, Mycenae. So on his way back to Mycenae from Iberia, he uh, fought with two giants, Albion and Bergion, who were the sons of Poseidon. Um, he prayed to his father Zeus for help, and under the protection of Zeus, he won the battle. And he, pre he prayed to Zeus in a kneeling position, which gave him the name Angonassin, uh, meaning on his knees, or the kneeler, which is what we now call Heracles' constellation today. This was described by Dionysus of Halicarnassus in a myth, ab in a myth about him. Uh, fun fact, Heracles once sacked Troy. Not as part of the Iliad. It was just a Tuesday. Yeah, he, he just sacked Troy. Um, Poseidon had sent a sea monster, uh, Cetus or Ketos to attack Troy. Um, and technically the story of Heracles sacking Troy is um, related to stuff in the Iliad. Um, but it's not a part of the Iliad. Um, Laomedon, the king, was going to sacrifice his daughter Hesione to Poseidon to appease him. But Heracles arrived, agreeing to kill the monster, if Laomedon would give him the horses, taken from Zeus as compensation for Zeus's kidnapping of Ganymede, Ganymede, who was another one of Zeus's fucking flings. God damn it. So Laomedon agreed. Heracles killed the monster. And then Laomedon betrayed him. So Heracles and his followers attacked all of Troy and sacked it, slaying all of his sons there except Podarches, who was renamed Priam, King Priam of Troy, um, who saved his own life by giving Heracles the golden veil Hesion had made. Uh, Telamon took Hesion as a war prize and they had a son, Teucer. Teucer will shoot any ambush attack and little Ajax will stay back. Nestor, secure Helen and protector. Leo, avenge your father, kill the brothers of Hector. 
You're gonna have to tell people where that's from because that, no, this is not I'm released, not uh, musical. No, I'm not. That song is out. That song has been out for a year. People know this. Except they don't unless they follow that specific wing. Somebody in the comments, I need you to comment and say you know exactly where that is from. Prove Nick Knack wrong. I will give you no more hints. I believe in you. Um, so, after the laborers, it was also... Heracles was told by the gods in another myth that he was supposed to create a colony in Sardinia and make his sons, um, who he had with the daughters of Thespius, the leaders of the settlement. Um, so when his sons became adults, he sent them and Iolaus, his nephew, to that island to become the leaders of a colony there. So... There's a number of other adventures attributed to him. Um, he visited Evander with Antor, who stayed in Italy. Evander is mentioned again in the Aeneid. Um, he kills the robber Termarius. He defeats the Bebrises, who were ruled by King Magdon, giving their land to Prince Lycus of Mysia. Um, he also killed King Amathian of Arabia and the Egyptian king Osiris after they attempted to sacrifice him to their gods. And then he killed Laterases, and then he killed Periclemanus, and then he killed Silius, and then he killed Laprius, <laughs> and I'm then killing. he killed Alistair, and then he killed Eryx of Sicily. Then he killed Kenny. <laughs> Um, and then when Hippocoon overthrew Tyndarius as king of Sparta, he reinstated Tyndarius and killed Hippocoon and his sons. And then he killed the son of Ares, um, uh, Cycnus, um, which is in Hesiod's Shield of Heracles. And then he killed Alcyoneus and Porphyrian, the giants. And then he killed Antaeus, who was a giant that was immortal when he touched the earth. By lifting him up into the air and strangling him while airborne. Um, and then pygmies tried to kill him because they were the brothers of Antaeus, so he killed them. And then he went to war with Augeas because Augeas wouldn't give him a reward for clearing the stables. And he killed them and then marched into the city and sacked it. <laughs> um, okay, here's one. Um, so he visits the house of Admetus and Alcestis and Heracles, unaware of Alcestis's fate, that death is going to come and collect her, um, does not want to, him to feel burdened by this horrible thing that's going to happen. So they drink and they make merry and revel and eventually uh, he hides by the grave of Alcestis and when death comes to collect her, he squeezes him until he gives up and returns Alcestis to her husband. So he doesn't kill her. He threatens to kill death instead. <laughs> he also challenged Dionysus to a drinking contest and lost, yeah. which meant that he was forced to join the Theasus, which was the ecstatic retinue of Dionysus, a group of inebriated revelers for a time. Um, he appears in Aristophanes' The Frog story, and according to Herodotus, he is the ancestral hero of the Scythians. Um, uh, Photius, and uh, ascribed by Photius to Ptolemy Hephaestion in the fifth book of the New History, it said that he killed a different giant lion and wore its skin. He fought and killed Cacus. He fought and killed the Sicani people, including Leucaspis. I'm beginning to see a pattern here. Look, I'm gonna be honest. It's it, like a lot of a lot of Heracles' stories are just Heracles versus another person. Uh, winner survives. <laughs> it's like Goku power scaling videos. It really yeah. is. So, the death of Heracles. Um, so he defeated Achelaus, the god of the Achelous River, and Heracles took Deianira as his wife at this time. He then traveled to Tiryns, where a centaur named Nessus offered to help Daenera cross a river while Heracles scrims it. But Nessus, true to mischievous centaur archetypes in Greek mythology, tries to, tries to steal Daenera away. So Heracles shoots him with arrows dipped in the blood of the Lernian Hydra. Um, in order to enact revenge, Nessus gives Daenera his blood-soaked tunic, telling her it will excite the love of her husband. So... 
A few years later, uh, Deianira hears rumors that she has a rival for the love of Heracles. She remembers Nessus's words at this time and gives him the bloodstained shirt in order to ignite his passion in her. Um, the herald Lycus delivers the shirt to Heracles, but the blood from Nessus is still on it, contaminated with the Lernian Hydra's blood. So when he puts on the shirt, it poisons him, ripping into his skin and bones. He throws the herald into the sea, thinking it was the herald who poisoned him, and then, as he is dying, he rips up full trees and builds his own funeral pyre on Mount Oeta, which, and then his pyre is lit by Poeas, who is the father of Philoctetes. Um, and as his body burns, his immortal side rises into heaven to reside as part of the Olympic pantheon. Um, in another version, it's Iolaus, his nephew, who lights the pyre. Um, but in the version where it's Philoctetes or Poeas, they receive his bow and arrows, which were later used by the Greeks to defeat uh, the Trojans in the Trojan War. Um, in that altercation, Philoctetes would confront Paris and shoot a poisoned arrow at him, leading to the death of Paris. Um, interestingly enough, Herodotus actually says that Heracles lived 900 years before his own time. So he actually dates this to the 13th century BC. Fascinating. Which doesn't, I mean, Herodotus, first historian, um, doesn't match up with the dates that we think we have for Troy. But the dates we have for Troy are uncertain because of a myriad of factors, which I will not get into because I will get into a very angry and aggravated rant that nobody wants to hear except for my professors. So he ascends to Olympus as a god, reconciles with Hera, and marries her daughter Hebe. <laughs> they have two sons together, um, Alexieris and Anchetus. When Typhon, the father of monsters, attacks Olympus um, and all the gods uh, ran to Egypt transformed into animals, Heracles is said to have become a fawn. In the dialogues of the gods, he and another recently deified mortal, Asclepius, fight over who gets a seat at the table of gods, and Zeus rules in favor of Asclepius, reasoning that the seat should go to the one who became a god first. Heracles appears to Philoctetes, who's, a, who's abandoned by the Greeks on Lemnos Island, um, in kind of a, an interesting intervention, um, convincing Philoctetes to join the other Greeks at Troy, where he ends up killing Paris with Heracles' own arrows. It's funny that he and Asclepius got into that argument, because weren't they both Argonauts at one point? I think so, I yeah. don't know if at the same points as each other, but... Well, I think so, yeah. Asclepius is another figure I'm going to be very interested when we get there. So, just, just a quick recap. Remember, he's married four times. Megara, um, Omphal, Deianira, and Hebe. Uh, he has a number of affairs. A it's hard number. To count, it's hard to count which of his body counts are higher. The kill count or the yeah count. Well, it's said that when he went to kill the Lion of Therion, I don't know if you've heard this story, but the, the king of, of the Thespiae, Thespius offered him the chance to perform sexual intercourse with all 50 of his daughters in a single night, which he took him up on. They all became pregnant and they all bore sons. How convenient. Now a bunch of people can claim descendancy from Heracles. Some people call this his 13th labor. <laughs> um, fun fact, because of this particular story, a bunch of the kings of ancient Greece traced their lineages to call themselves like Heraclidae, right? Especially Sparta and Macedon. How convenient. Yeah, yeah. Because remember, we talked about Alexander the Great saying that he was descended from Heracles. So, there was also the Scythian thing. Um, then Dionysus of Halic... This one's a little weird to me. So Dionysus of Halicarnassus said that Heracles had an affair with Lavinia, the daughter of Evander... And they had a son named Pallas. But Lavinia, the daughter of Evander, in Virgil's Aeneid, is promised to Aeneas to start the new Latin race. So there's an interesting crossover of stories. Um, but hey, hey guys, 
Heracles isn't just for the hoes. He's also for the bros. Let's talk about some of his male lovers. I'm sorry. I came up with that on the spot, and I think that was great. Heracles, for the bros and the hoes. So... Plutarch said that Heracles had male lovers beyond the ability to count their total number. Uh, it's said that one of his, so Theban Aeolus, his charioteer and squire, in the end Heracles would help find a wife for his lover. Um, and But that um, Plutarch says that during his own time living, like when he was living, it was a thing that male couples would go to Eolas's tomb and swear an oath of loyalty to the hero and each other. Like this legend of like the, the them two being lovers was so strong. Um, he also cites one of his other lovers being Admetus, who assisted in the Caledonian boar hunt as a lover. Um, others attribute Hylas, who sailed with Heracles on the Argo, because why else would he literally miss the Argo leaving, but to look for Hylas for so long because he was his lover. They also say um, Alicatus, honored in Sparta, who actually had a sanctuary and a yearly set of games dedicated to him called the um, Alicatea. That's a very ancient myth. Um, Abdera's hero Abderus was another one of his lovers, um, said to have been entrusted with the carnivorous horses of Diomedes eventually. Um, remember Iphetus, the brother of the woman that he stole? Some people say he fucked him too. Also, Nereus, um, the most beautiful man. Pausanias cites um, Achaia and Sostratus as his lovers. And then there's also a series of lovers from later literature. Um, some of them are a little weird because in later literature... Eurystheus is called one of his lovers, Adonis, Carithus, Argus, Nestor. Like that, that's not even contemporary with one another. Um, Apollonius's Argonautica lists Hylas, Philoctetes, Diomas, Perithoas, and Phryx as his male lovers. And Diomas is corroborated by Stephanus of Byzantium, too, as well. So remember, Heracles. Is Heracles is for the bros and the hoes. Our bisexual king. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bisexual king. <laughs> so Heracles had a lot of children. Like, a lot of children. <laughs> um, pretty much every single affair he had with a woman always, almost always resulted in a son and several daughters. He got that Zeus blood. Yeah. So uh, he he had... His children are collectively known as the Heracleidae. There are so many of them. Right? Because we, ju we just don't know them all. Um, the most famous ones are uh, those that he killed by Megara. Um, and then Hylas and his brothers, which were by Deianera who Eurystheus expelled after his death, supposedly. Um, but so, with Megara, he supposedly had four children. With Onphale, he had two. With Deanira, he had six. With Hebe, he had two. With Astadamian, he had one. With Astochi, he had one. With Auge, he had one. With Autone, he had one. Baletia, uh, one. Barga, one. Bulba, one. Keltina, one. Chalciope, one. Chania, one. The Scythian uh, Dracania or Echidnea, three. Um, Epicast, one. Lavinia, one. Malice, one. Medea, one. <laughs> Melite, one. Myrto, one. Palantha, one. Parthenope, one. Fialo, one. Phosphus, two. Pyrene, one. Rhea, one. <laughs> Un literally ten more children are attributed to him. We don't even know their mothers. Right? So we're, we're already in the count of like. 40 to 50 kids, right? And that's just the ones that we have names for, like specific names for. I'm not even sure his 13th labor, I'm not even sure they bothered to name all the kids that came out of that one because it's said that every single one of those 50 daughters each bore him a son and daughter, if not more. That truly was the 13th labor. My man owed a lot in child support. <sighs> so much so much so his his roman myths aren't 
a whole ton different, right? You have to keep in mind a lot of a lot of Roman mythology is pretty heavily based off of older Greek stories. They're not one-to-one. -one. Obviously, there are differences. This is actually a different culture. And although we like to joke today that, you know, Roman mythology is just a copy-paste of Greek mythology, it actually isn't. The Romans had a pretty nuanced and open pantheon, and they pretty regularly introduced new gods, and they were fairly accepting of different cults, depending on the type of cult. So Roman religion is not equivalent to that of Greek religion. It was conducted in a very different way, um, participated in in a different way, and there were different sort of um, things central to the practice of it. For example, one of the most important things in Roman religion is the pater familias and the gineas and lares of the houses, right? The protector spirits of the houses, the land, the pantry, and the person who was the, the head of the family. Right. And these people were very important. And that's not necessarily the case in, in Greek religion. It's not just not codified quite the same way. Um, so while we joke that it is copy paste, it is not always exactly a copy paste. For example, a lot of the Roman pantheon are not actually Greek gods. They are gods from other areas that the Romans adopted into their own pantheon and made a part of their group. For example, um, after the Second Punic War, the cult of Magna Mater was brought into Rome symbolically. So the, the Romans literally took this goddess, right, from Turkey, right? Not, sorry, not Turkey, but... The, the goddess of the people they were fighting in the Punic Wars, right? And in a, in a move to demoralize their opponents, they brought her into Rome, inducted her as a Roman deity, and then told their opponents, look, your goddess abandons you in favor of us. She is now our goddess. And then Magna Mater became part of the Roman pantheon. So... It's not a copy paste of Greek mythology is really what I'm trying to get at. If there's a lot more nuance to it, but that's the general gist of it. Rome was just a retirement home for gods and goddesses. Yeah, also the the Romans valued different different things than the Greeks did in general, so the gods often have sort of different personalities ascribed to them as they did from Greek tradition or they just have kind of different attributes along with them. So in Roman mythology, Hercules is seen as a chapter, a champion of the weak and a protector. But once again, we still have the story of Juno sending people to prevent his birth, um, eventually being tricked so that he could be born, the sending of the serpents, the abandoning of the baby, the bringing, the Minerva bringing him to Juno, uh, her nursing him and her spilling her milk and creating the Milky Way. You giving had to keep that part. Yeah, yeah, you had to keep that part. Um, however... In the, in the Roman version, when she gives the infant back to Minerva, um, Minerva also feeds the child from her breast, um, imbuing him with strength and power beyond what he already had gotten. I, I couldn't tell what you're doing now. I'm not sure if you're trying to give your own demonstration of strength and power. No, my, my cord doesn't, doesn't fit into the that's unfortunate it's it's because this part isn't long enough and mm. i don't want to pay for a whole new set of new charger cords just because it doesn't fit my case but i do need to be more careful because i dropped my phone the other day and now i have a crack that you can't see but i know is there and it bothers me same i got one on my phone too mine goes from here to here mine goes from here to here and then there's another smaller one oh hey it's almost identical <laughs> But no, you can barely see it. Mine wasn't from dropping the phone. When I got this case, the case, it said it was for this phone model, but it was too uh -huh. tight, so it constricted the screen and cracked oh. it. Oh. Yeah, I was getting out of the car at the grocery store, and it fell out of my pocket straight down on the ground with no case on it. Twinsies. <laughs> I girl bossed too close to the sun. Um, I, because the charger cord wasn't fitting it, I hadn't put the case on in like a month and a half. <laughs> and I hadn't <laughs> dropped it. But I girl boss too close to the sun and then I dropped it. Now I have a crack in my screen. And I can't afford to replace my phone, so I don't want to crack it any further. So I have to remember to put it back on. Um, so Hercules, the Latin name, comes from the Etruscan. Um, the Etruscans wrote about Heracli, Heracli, 
um, and was Hercules in was a subject of Etruscan art, appearing often in Etruscan art. Um, Etruscan culture is one of the main contributors to later Roman culture when you think back to the early period because the Etruscans were a major part of early Roman civil, uh, civilization. Um, however, Hercules did have a, a bunch of myths that were pretty specifically Roman. So he's associated with the Aventine Hill through his son um, Aventinus. Mark Anthony and the Emperor Commodus both claimed him as personal patron gods. Um, and at one point, um, he was considered a deity concerned with children and childbirth because of his precocious infancy and because of his fathering of countless children. Um, Roman brides actually wore a belt tied with the knot of Hercules, which was meant to be hard to untie. And uh, there was a comic playwright, Plautus, who actually put the myth of Hercules' conception as a sexual comedy in his play called Amphitryon. Um, Seneca. Okay, that, that, that should actually sounds kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, Seneca also wrote about the tragedies, the tragedy of Hercules Furens, about his bout with madness. Um, during the imperial era, Hercules was widely worshipped from Hispania to Gaul. He did have a Germanic association. Um, Tacitus said that the Germanic peoples actually worshipped uh, Her Hercules, which is pretty interesting. Um, and so it's it was pretty common to find uh, amulets that depicted things representing Heracles that were later replaced by Viking uh, Thor's hammer pendants in, in kind of the archaeological record, which is pretty interesting. Because when you think about the two characters, they're actually kind of similar in a number of ways, um, which I just think is absolutely hilarious. Um, there is several aspects of worship that are pretty unique to kind of Rome. For example, they had something called the Road of Hercules. It was said to be the route across southern Gaul that he took during his 10th labor, bringing the cattle of Geryon from the Red Isles. Um, it's said that Hannibal took this same path when he marched on Italy to encourage the belief that he was the second coming of Hercules. Um, and as a result, primary sources from the period would often make comparisons between Hercules and Hannibal. And Hannibal also tried to invoke these parallels by visiting the shrine of Hercules at Gades while starting his march on Italy and performing labors while crossing the Alps. Um, in ancient Roman society, uh, cult worship was typically limited in participation to men. And women were really only allowed to participate in two kinds of cults. Cults that inspired virginal chastity and cults that had to do with childbirth. However, we do have textual sources saying that there were allowed to be female worshippers of Apollo, Mars, Jupiter, and Heracles, or Hercules. Um, although some scholars say that it's completely the opposite and women were completely prohibited from Hercules cults, Others say that it was just the Ara Maxima, like a specific look, because they said that there were women who worshipped Hercules. And remember, Hercules is worshipped in association with childbirth in Rome, right? So if women are allowed to worship things associated with childbirth and participate in childbirth-related cults, you would think that by proxy of Heracles having a childbirth-associated cult, women would be allowed to worship Heracles. So potentially, even in Rome, Heracles was still for both the bros and the hoes. Yup. With the other one being more surprising this time. <laughs> yeah. Um, Heracles is present in the Aeneid. It's very obvious that he was already being worshipped. And uh, Heracles is often referred to in Roman triumphs and in art. He is heavily depicted in Roman art. There is literally Roman art of Heracles constantly, everywhere, all over the place. Hundreds of statues. We love that for him. Um, in the modern day, I thought this was fun, but uh, in the modern day, there have actually been six British Royal Navy ships named Hercules. Um, successive ones. Um, there were 19 French naval ships called Hercules and three more named Alcide. Uh, five U.S. Navy ships are named Hercules, four Spanish naval ships, four Argentinian naval ships, and two Swedish naval ships were named Hercules. Um, also, Lockheed Martin produces the Lockheed C-130 Hercules planes, and the Germans codenamed an Operation Hercules, 
which was about the invasion of Malta during the Second World War. And I cannot even count to you the amount of movies and TV series that Hercules and books that Hercules shows up in. That is an impossible task. If you want a true classic, it's Hercules and the Twelve Labors. It is one of the most prolific uh, heroes in all of Greek and Roman mythology. It's just oftentimes you have to edit out the uh, ex 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 excessive amount of killing and he did. And the fact that he was for the bros and the hoes. Yeah. Well, that's that's just those those cat lickers. <laughs> he he was actually there is a fair amount of medieval and uh, Renaissance mythology about him. I'm just not touching on that because that's all heavily kind of Christianized and. So before we get into anything, then I do want to uh, say I realized mid spiel that uh, I forgot to pull something up. So if you want, I could pull that up real quickly before we get started. A fate thing or a fate thing? Yeah. Damn it. Gets you a break after your little uh, 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 lecture. You went for a full hour straight there, so. It's not the longest I've gone recently. No, but, like, we have time. You can take a quick break if you want. I need it. Yeah, because you don't have much on him for fate. Not comparatively. And I'm going to be honest. There is just... Uh, there are probably going to be comments about all the things I missed mentioning and the things I didn't detail. And that is just going to have to be the case with a character like Heracles. It would take a monumental amount of effort to collect and collate every single piece of written or artistic work about him by primary and secondary source authors through the ages. It would be a monumental mammoth task. And I am just not the person to take on that task. I do not have the access to all of the resources I would need um, and while I know a lot about Greek and Roman mythology and sort of Greek and Roman religion, that is not something that I really have the time to kind of undertake. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like that, that's the sort of thing that you could make a PhD out of, you know, collecting and collating every single thing about Hercules and, and doing that. And if anyone knows of any really good books on the subject, I would be very interested because I don't actually have any books that are specifically about Heracles or Hercules, uh, but I have a lot of books that mention him or cite some of his stories because I do have Herodotus's histories and I do have a bunch of like the, the Greek mythology books and the Roman stuff that mentions him. And uh, I mean, obviously I've missed some things, you know, like there were just things I didn't cover because they're not huge parts of his myth. They're not universally attested. But I tried to cover the big stuff, the labors, his death, his participation in the Argonautica, his connection to the Trojan War, his four major wives. Um, his 13th labor was just kind of funny. It doesn't matter, but I thought it was funny. Um, so, I mean, I covered everything you need to know about Heracles or Hercules to say that you know about Heracles or Hercules. But I certainly did not in any means cover sort of a comprehensive and, and totalitarian description of this character and everything about him, you know? And I, I just can't do that. The character's too large. We would have been here for like 12 hours if I had decided to cover every single thing that has been said or written about him, you know? 12-hour lecture from hell. I mean, it, it really would have been. I don't think either one of us would have enjoyed it, especially because when you think that with some of these Greek stories, the the presence of sort of oral tradition and translational differences and sort of multiple people writing on these things means that sometimes you have 15 versions of the same one anecdote, each one differing in one small and pedantic way. You know what I mean? And that's not really productive. Like, it doesn't really contribute to your understanding of the character to read 12 pedantic differences about a single story. In my opinion, what contributes most to your understanding of the character is to understand the things that they are most famous for, the things that they are most well-known for, and then some of the, the kind of bigger and more famous differences, and then maybe some small anecdotes and things that you find amusing or funny. Unless you're going to be a scholar of Heracles, you do not need to go into that depth. You know? And I certainly don't need to go into it for a YouTube video. Not one of this nature. Yeah, get out of my chair. I was gonna say, you, we can go ahead and switch whenever you want. Oh, while I'm on camera, hi guys, you don't see me on camera for these. Alright, bye. 
Yeah, honestly, for all they know, I could just be recording these in a vacuum and you just show up to do the fate stuff. I know. Sometimes I wonder if we should do that. <laughs> Actually, I've been meaning to ask... Peachy! Honestly, there's a couple videos that could really benefit from that. Ones where we know we're going to go along probably could help us. Even if, like, yeah. keep, maybe I can come around for some of it, but I don't need to be there for all of it. Exactly. Or I can literally be on a Discord call to you so you can still hear yeah. it, but I'm just filming it on my own. Something to consider. There's definitely some coming up that we could use that, that could for. Cut down on time. Yeah. Because then I could do the this part on my own instead of having to wait for when we both have time. Anyways, Heracles, Berserker. Gee, I wonder how you knew. It's like we all know. It's like we just watched the films or something. Bazaka. Are those coming out contemporarily? Uh, I've already talked about how it's going in and I've talked about how it went Never and mind. we watched it on stream, so they know. Heracles. Whoa, cool design. You've never seen this before. I have seen this, in fact, so many times. Do, 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 yeah, this time do, it doesn't do, want to do, 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 do. Oh, there we go. I tempted fate. I touched the button. Hold on, let's try again. Really? The fuck? Oh. That was me. I did that. It's because the Pokemon books are there. It's not sitting right. Do you mind just piling them on top of that stack for yeah. now? I'm trying to check my internet connection. I'm just going to reload this tab and see if I can... See if that fixes it. Might have just been a loading issue. Yeah. There we go. Okay, we're good. All right. Oh, no. I've never seen this depiction before. Totally new. Totally awe-inspiring. Look, there's his club. And there's the head of the Nemean lion. See, that wasn't on the parts you've seen of him before. This design is no, a little bit newer no. for you. No, That was new. <laughs> <laughs> that looks exactly like he looked like in the Fate movies. <laughs> this is the one I know. Big club. Big club. Big axe. <laughs> uh, can I assume that this is meant to be Heracles in the grip of the madness? Yes, that's actually exactly the lore that's going on here with Berserker Heracles. Okay. He's not like... Well, I know he he is perfectly willing to kill his own master in the madness, but um, um, he he does still have a heart. Here. But he's so sweet in heaven's feel. So I'll need to balance talking about familiar information with stuff less known because you've seen this Heracles three times now. Um, so. Yeah, because I've seen Heracles in Fate's Day Nine, two thousand six. I've seen Heracles in. Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works. I've seen Heracles and Fate Heaven's, Heaven's Feel. Yeah. So, like, the key thing there was, yeah, that's him in the madness where he kills his wife and children each time. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing I have to note, and you kind of saw this in Heaven's Feel, uh, what he looks like without his madness enhancement are that his muscles are less Hulk-like and his face is a lot more human as opposed to being the kind of monstrous, I would almost even say, like, bestial face he has going on yeah um that said and this you might not have gotten from the heavens field films his height is absolutely normal here he is just really really tall in fate he's like six nine yeah <laughs> nice <laughs> I'm, I'm going to just be honest, it's hilarious to just see all the people related to him, because it, it's so funny, because like in Fate, we have characters who are related to one another, but because he is the son of Zeus, that means he is indirectly related to every single one of Zeus's children, and all of Zeus's children's children, which means half of the gods, and like 90% of the demigods that exist. Because everyone claims descendancy from Zeus or some other hero. And then those heroes claim their descendancy from Zeus or Ares or Aphrodite or whatever. So they're all related. I'd say it's unrealistic, but Genghis Khan exists. Well, yeah. The Spartan kings Leonidas claimed descendancy from Hercules. Fucking Alexander the Great claimed descendancy from Hercules. Romulus and Remus were descended from Hercules indirectly. Penthesilia and Hippolyta were descended from Ares, who's descended from 
Zeus, who make, which makes them a cousin of Heracles. Um, any children of Demeter would be his cousin, so that's Persephone. Any children of Persephone and Hades, therefore, would be his nephews. Um, any of Poseidon's children would be his cousins. Any of any of the other gods' children, so long, or not his cousins, but his, yeah, his cousins. Um, so, you know, any child of even Zeus's siblings would be his, what, aunts and uncles or cousins? And that's like 95% of everyone on Olympus. Technically, technically, the exception to that would be Helios, Selene, and Aphrodite. Nope, not Aphrodite. Because... She was implied to be from this, Kronos, right? From Kronos. So only Aphrodite, if you ascribe to the primordial Aphrodite who existed before even the Titans and is not technically genetically related to any of the Titans or to Zeus. But that is one version of multiple Aphrodite myths. So, yeah. I... Sorry. I just derailed that. No, no, you're good. I have it. Unfortunately, because we've seen him in all of this stuff, I don't have a lot to expand on him here character-wise. You've seen him. He's best fate dad. Oh, yeah, because I've, I've literally read about all his appearances. Okay. Yeah. So just... Hold on. I'm going to look at some art then. Yeah. Ooh, look at there's his bow with the arrows, the poison arrows. There was a bow. There's the arrow. All right. Uh, there's, there's stuff for me to see here. Yeah, because he's an old fake character. Yeah. Oh. He big boy. What I love is in like a lot of his appearance, he just changes art style altogether because I love those. he's so big, Aww. you kind of have to stylize him somewhat. Okay, I know there's some more in here that aren't. Uh, maybe no, the uh, yeah, a lot of that's not FGO. I'm trying to avoid anything that might be in his fake grand order back end. So okay, let me let me scroll. Let's see, all right. No oh, relationships. Okay, so Ilias feel. Aww, no, I already know what that relationship is. It's fucking sweet. Chiron. One regret in regards to the teacher, even though Master Chiron may have been prepared for it when he had broken through the battlefield to begin with. Taking out the Hydra poison may have been too much. Okay. Jason, an acquaintance skilled with his mouth. Jason and the Argonauts. That makes sense. Medea, completely scary when above the Argo. Makes sense. Atalanta, a fellow Argonaut who would have loved to compete in the bow with her, but before he realized it, she had already left the ship. Medusa, truly, the gods are the worst. I really feel like he and Medusa could, like, commiserate. Aww, Ilya acknowledging Bazaka. Bazaka. Aww. I like the change to red eyes from the yellow. Yeah, every version of him has a different, like, take oh, on his Oh, there's design. fighting Artoria. Ooh. It's not like I haven't seen most of this in a different form. No, you're just getting to see some of the visual yeah. novel CGs Ooh. now. Ooh. Madness. No, that's this the, is when he's got the... Like yeah. blackened version. Yeah. He's been taken by the shadow thing. I'll be honest, my favorite canonical version of Herc is um, when he plays with his doggy. Of course. With his special noble phantasm. Oh, he's got a bunch of unlimited codes. God Hand, Twelve Labors, Augeas, Groundbaker, Nemea, Breaking Roar, Stymphalius, Crete, Revealing Cry, Karakinos, Gigantomachy, The Nine Lives... <gasps> Look at that. Best boy. <laughs> Jesus. Fate Khaled liner. Okay. Yes. Berserkar. Berserkar. This is the Argonauts. Yep. Yeah. He looks good. <laughs> Heracles in battle. All right, skills, fighting. We're, we're into abilities, finally. So we've seen Herc before, so you don't need me to tell you that he's ridiculously strong. And He fight hard. He hit hard. When you kill him, he get back up and kill you. Yeah. <laughs> that That's it, my guy. He hit 
hard. He unga bunga. And if what 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 did Cap say in uh, Captain in in the first Avengers movie? If if they hit you, hit them back. If they kill you, get back up. Yes, I thought that was the second. Maybe it was the second movie. Either way, he says that, and that is exactly what Herc does. Uh, it is worth noting he's so strong and so mad that normal command spells would actually not work on him at all if he wanted to do something. Um, it takes Ilya activating like a solid 10 that she only has because of being a homunculus involved with the Grail Wars function uh, to rein him in. Mm-hmm. He makes use of one of two different weapons. Either you saw them earlier, the the big axe sword club mm-hmm. uh, made of rock, or he has that actual battle axe in his yep. final ascension. I like the battle continuation where they're like, Ku Cullen's battle continuation is never give up no matter what. Heracles is just the ability to keep fucking going. It's not that he's not giving up. He's just not dying. <laughs> it's just like, he dies, and then he goes, no. And physically claws his way back to life. Oh no, that's not his battle continuation. His battle continuation is just another layer of durability well, on that. Th- yeah, yeah. So Valor, Divinity, Mind's Eye, yada yada. I have seen this man fight. I have seen him fight. Look, a gift. So much. I know, isn't it beautiful? Um, so his main weapon isn't a noble fan phasm. It's just that axe sword. The giant fucking axe sword. It's big. His noble phantasms are even more powerful. So I've so technically I've only seen these in our D and D campaign. Yes. But in 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 essence, one of his noble phantasms is the ability to come back what nine times? Eleven times. Eleven. One for every labor one outside for every the final labor. one, and yeah. the final labor is manifested in godlike durability. Mm-hmm. That means, and they mention this in Unlimited Blade Works, but I don't know if you remember that that no noble phantasms yes. lower than the B rank can actually hurt him. I remember that. Oh, they have art for each one of the twelve. <sighs> yeah, so these were all these were all in Heaven's Field, but they flashed by really quickly. Yeah, I couldn't see them. Oh, <gasps> oh, Jesus! Another thing to note about the Noble Phantasm God Hand is the the mm-hmm. the, the, yeah. the, the the big come back over and over and over again one. Um, every time he dies. The weapon that killed him becomes pretty much ineffective against him. Mm-hmm. It takes like either the ability to progressively increase that weapon's power over time, which is what Artoria does in Heaven's Feel, mm-hmm. the ability to hit him with multiple we- types of weapons, which is what Emiya and Gilgamesh yep. do to fight him. And um, let me see. Although, here. let's be honest here, um, it was, and I'm sure y'all have heard me gush about this, but Fate, Stay Night, Unlimited Blade works. His fight with Gilgamesh is. Maybe one of the most epic fights I have ever seen in the Fate series thus far. Simply because Gilgamesh goes into that fight so confident that he is going to win. And Hercules almost gets him. Like, this is... Like, literally that close. Like, literally that... Like, here. Right? And that is amazing. Because Gilgamesh is super powerful. Like, one of the things we said, like, because remember, Gilgamesh fights Emiya, right? Mm-hmm. And one of the only reasons why he doesn't win against Emiya is because Emiya trains relentlessly in one sort of, sort of like, like weapons, right? And he's good at his weapons. Meanwhile, Gilgamesh, because he has so many weapons, he's not really an expert in any of them. Like, he knows how to use them and he can fire them off powerfully, but he's not nuanced. He's not mm-hmm. a, an expert wielder, right? Neither is Hercules. He is just so fucking enduring. It's, like, it's specifically written in the visual novel, and I believe it said, it might have been, I don't know if it's in the end, but it's written in the visual novel, that that fight for Herc wasn't a matter of an actual fight. It was, if he reaches Gilgamesh, Gilgamesh is dead. Because mm-hmm. um, he'll pop him like those snake, snakes. The last way of killing Heracles is what you see in Fate Stay Night. I don't. You probably, this is probably the one you remember the least, mm-hmm. which is just blow away multiple lives at once with yes. one strong attack. I remember that vaguely. Um, so technically, God Hand is... That's one. He has the other one, Nine Lives. So there's a reason you never see this in Fate Stay Night, mostly. Mm-hmm. Because he does not have access to it as a Berserker, except oh. in FGO. Can he be summoned as anything but a Berserker? 
he can be summoned in literally every single mainline class. I love that. Oh, I see how many tabs are across the screen now. Never mind. Yeah. So a stupid question. As far as nine lives go, the only time you see it in the original Fate Stay Night is when Emia kills Herc in Heaven's Feel. Mm -hmm. Emia replicates nine lives, slightly altered, but it's nine lives. Um, mm -hmm. And the way this works is basically it's Heracles recreating what it, Fate says is how he killed the Lyrian Hydra. Mm -hmm. Which is shooting each of the uh, each of the heads of the Hydra at once, mm -hmm. um, all nine heads, um, except he can replicate it with any weapon, meaning he's taking nine progressively stronger attacks with his axe sword or his axe, mm -hmm. um, one after another in such rapid succession. It's pretty much all at once and guaranteed to hit, kind of like Sasaki Kojiro's. Yeah, I will say so. I'm. I went down to find the, the illustrator so I could take mm -hmm. a look. But the original... Did you read this about the original concept of God Hand? Yes. Actually, I'll be getting into that a little bit later. But we... Because I have kind but of also, a design for him. But also that, like, Berserker died even though he won and Gilgamesh lost but survived. Because he really kind of did. And then oh, the fact that they originally planned to have Ilya and Herc share lives. So as long as Berserker lived, Ilya would be immortal. That would be too OP. All right, so Azusa. Azusa designed, also designed Giles Dure, Canis, Diarmud Wadubn, and the human form of Zeus. That's, his, F or that's his FGO artist, right? Yes. Because in yeah, Fate's yeah. Day Night, he's done by the same one as everyone else, Takeuchi, yeah. I believe. But. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Okay. So, because Nine Lives is the one that you see all the time, <laughs> Berserker. Berserker! Uh, because Nine Lives is the one you see all the time, that's what we have today. It's the one that's used whenever they need a super attack for her. Because it's yep. hard to make God Hand into a super attack yeah. as much as it's just a state of being. Yeah. Okay, so you've got some NPs for me. Oh. First I got the fighting game because okay. classic Fate Stay Night. Is any of this going to get us... Should not. Ding-donged. No. I like that he's fighting Koo. That's a good matchup. Poor Koo. Jesus, poor Koo. There's nine lives. I don't know if they're... We'll just watch through the animations here. Until Herc stops being on screen. <laughs> he just jumped right the fuck back up. And again. Jesus. Okay, we're done with her. Okay. Christ. All right. So now we have his FGO. This should be post-update. I'll immediately call it out if it's not. Okay. No, that's... You're good. That's crisp. That's fresh. That's from four months ago. Yeah, that. this is the... Yeah. Big boom. He has one animation I really love. Bang, 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 boonga. Where is it? You know, it's not very sophisticated, but I can kind of get behind the fact that all he's doing is just whapping. It's what you expect, Dad. The man is just whamming. There's really one that's like hard. a lot more, uh, um, mob. Here it is. Whammon, though. My man is just whammon. Going to town. It's just roaring up. Okay. That's some NP animations. Or one. Nine lives. I could actually count out those nine. Overkill. Yeah. You know, kudos to them just being like, let me just... Like, like this is an animation update, but we're not going to give him anything special. He is just going to stand there and just bang, bang, They bang, did about as much as they bang. could. They're like, he has hit it, roar so strong it hurts them, and, like, 
distort the ground enough with one smash that it becomes an attack itself. Hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, get it, get it, get it, get it. <laughs> to your barbarians. Unga boonga. I really wanted Herc when we started the uh, fate, the fate campaign, the D and D one. Like I was desperate for Herc outside of Coup. I was like, Herc would be the one reason that I would I would give up Coup for. You then Gorn got him and died. <sighs> Just roar. We don't need you to speak. It's fine. Oh, that's Emia. He's just banging on. Oh. Just boonga boonga, all right. Hit it really hard, and you really feel it in those arcade animations. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, and then look, he's right there in the... Yep. I know her. I know him. I know him. I know him. I don't know them. I don't know them. I know her. I know her. I know her. I know... We're only missing these two. And I, technically, I know who this is. Yeah. All right. Who's next? Well, we have technically our first variation. You've already kind of seen it in this video. Berserkar! So, like, I'm dead ass serious here. This They added his car from form from Carnival Phantasm as a boss in a recent FGO event, so we live in the best timeline. I'm so excited. This event was called Ilya's Castle. <gasps> Berserkar! Oh my god! I love him. Glorious. Is this just... This is just the boss fights. If you want to skip around to see some animations, you can, but otherwise I just want to see. Vroom vroom! I love the horn. Oh. <laughs> I love that. Okay. I figured you would. So, Ooh! First class card? Yeah, so because he's a classic Fate Stay Night Servant, he has the class card in the Magical Girl series as well. Yay! Oh, that's a really cool outfit. Actually, based on Herc. And then, yeah, he just appears at one point. As most of the Fate Stay Night Servants do in that series. No, dude, that looks really cool. That's such a cool design. So... Because we've seen one of these before for Koo, right? Yeah, yeah. We've seen it for pretty much all of the Fate Stay Night services. Yeah. That looks so cool. So, when they're using the class card, um, the user has access to his Axe Sword as well as God Hand. Mm -hmm. um, but the user's sanity is taken due to how high Heracles' Madness Enhancement is. So, they're pretty much mad while they're using it. It's still useful in that... Uh, Class cards in Prisma Ilya can actually be combined to alter the classes of another class card. So Okay, so you could some... like use a Berserker card to make another character Berserker? Yeah, that kind of thing. Or they they do other weird things. Like at one point they use the Berserker card to create an Avenger card by merging it with Ryder okay. uh, and turning uh, Medusa into Gorgon, basically. Interesting. But yeah, that's the Berserker class card. We always have to make a side, like a little side tangent here for these when we do the face. No, they're super things. cool. I think yeah. some of them are really great, and that one looked great. So I see Herc prototype next. Yes. Is this baby Herc? No, this is Herc from Fate prototype. You actually oh, talked about God Hand from there a second ago. Okay. Yeah, if you want to click into this for us. Oh, yeah, we don't it's, have much. Yeah, it's literally just a sketch design there. Mm -hmm. um, we do know his abilities though. It's God Hand is not a resurrection. Instead, it's just a casual insurance of 11 victories in, in a row. In a row Jesus. Which is useful when there's only six ep six opponents. Because seven servants in a Grail War, you beat six, you still have victories left over. Yeah, it takes other weird noble phantasms like that to win, but obviously hasn't been written. We don't have that much on them either. Okay. Y'all, get on it. All right, I see an archer. Yes. So Herc does not have any other forms in... FGO, like, alternate classes that are summonable. Okay. But he does have an alternate class in Fate Strange Fake. Because in Fate Strange Fake, oh. you might not have got this from the book we read, 
But in Fate Strange Fake, there's actually two sets of servants. Fake ones and true ones. Mm -hmm. Her cure is the true archer of that Grail War. Oh. Um, true archer's identity is Heracles. But unfortunately, he does not get to stay long. Because um, while he... Her, true Archer Heracles is like one of the most heroic, like, good servants you can get. But his master was a piece of human feces that oh. knew that Heracles would never obey his orders, mm -hmm. uh, even with his command spells used, because he can still resist command spells like this. Uh, so with a combination of command spells to weaken him mentally and Holy Grail Mud, he is altered as soon as he is summoned into something else, which we will cover later. Yep. Wood tap. <laughs> as far as abilities go with this Heracles. <laughs> I'm just like, like, hear me out. Hear me out. Wood tap. <laughs> Heracles here is a straight conversion from Heracles Berserker into an archer. Okay. It's now that I'll know. Or actually, I noted it earlier that Heracles qualifies for every main classes, and all of them are significantly mm -hmm. more powerful than his Berserker form. His archer form is supposedly the strongest possible form he can be summoned. Yeah, because he's the, the bow and the, the famous stories. I mean, he uses a bow with great effect throughout his mythology. Mm -hmm. you, I, but you have to kind of think that, like, think about it this way. Think about ancient Greece. Swords, like the most common swords you would have found were like bronze short swords, maybe iron short swords. Bows and arrows and clubs and spears were far more common than swords were in terms of, like, common usage. So, like, I don't know if you've noticed, but, like, most of the Greek warriors we've gone over have used bows. Like, have you noticed that? That's not a coincidence. I don't think I can think of a straight Greek user. It's been, like, any kind of powerful of a satyr class servant that we've done. Yeah. It's, it's because when you, when you think about their mythology, you hear a lot about them using, like, clubs, spears, shields bows not a whole lot about swords and it's just because swords were not the thing yet people were not just fighting using swords predominantly people were wrestling people were having archery matches and archery was really considered like a test of skill so it was very popular to attribute to heroes because you had to show great skill to be successful at archery so we don't get to see heracles archer fight a lot in strange fake in fact we don't see him fight at all but the reason why is because Heracles Archer is so infamously powerful that the author of Strange Fake, the guy who did Durarara and Bacchano, yep. uh, purposely chose not to do anything about it with him because he knew he couldn't do him justice and decided to leave it for Nasu to handle himself one day. You know what? It's it's a better cop-out than what George R. R. Martin did to Rob Stark. I'll say that. So, as far as his noble phantasms and abilities go, it's, again, just a straight translation. He still has God Hand, and now he can clearly think while he's using it, too. Which makes him way more powerful. And Nine Lives is no longer sealed, and he can now do it with a ranged weapon, which is how he originally used it. Which is horrifying, terrifying, and, um, honestly, honestly, I would conservatively say, in my opinion, this is just based on what I would kind of give him... In terms of power-wise, if I was looking at him, I would say that if you summoned Archer Heracles, like that, that would be your what's your the 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 Grand Grand Archer. He is not Grand Archer. I know, but if but... he was servant summoned as Archer, I would give him Grand because I know Grand Archer. Mm -hmm. We've met Grand Archer, but Archer Herc is canonically the most powerful Herc in my opinion. Like that is the Herc. Well, it's not your opinion. That's the words yeah. of Nasu himself. Is that? The strongest Herc is Archer Herc. But, but even outside of that. You mean like yeah. Archer Herc is to like... Or the Archer class is to Herc as the Saber class is to King Arthur. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Like, like this like, is the this, de this definitive is Herc. the Archer. This is your Archer. <laughs> so. Like I... With a bow, I would put him up against our Grand Archer. Because our Grand Archer is a comma, right? No, Arjuna? it's Orion. Orion, it's Orion. Sorry. I keep thinking it's com comma. Another Arjuna. famous Greek bow user. Yeah. Comma? Orion. Sorry, I thought you meant Karna when I said Karna or whatever. Yeah. Okay, yeah, but I I would put him up against Orion. He's, I personally think, and this this is my headcanon, mythological figures, right? Orion versus Herc, Herc wins. The only person that Herc maybe doesn't win against is Achilles. Yeah. 
it gets weird with grand classes because the grand container is also powering up the servant as well. I know, but I'm just saying. There's qualifiers that Herc may not meet, even though he's a really good archer. I, I gotta put on the nerd glasses here, okay? Either way. Anyways, so, Alcides? Yes, so this is what he gets altered into with that Grail Mud and Command spell. Oh. So, when he's blackened by the Grail Mud, Herc turns into something of a Heracles altar called Alcides. Yeah. Alcides here is still an archer, but is now simultaneously an Avenger servant as well. Oh, interesting. He is significantly younger than Heracles was as well as personifying it, it, he's just a more youthful version of it i come to you once again tap alcides here it, the reason he's called alcides and not heracles is because he has rejected the gods themselves and heracles you'll remember was Isn't to name, pacify hera yep it's literally the pride or glory of hera and despite his that said despite his blackening despite his um his corruption. He still has a strong sense of morality. He's just got a more more. He has a more malleable code of ethics. So he's willing to work with his dog turd of a master until the end of the war, where he plans to kill him. Mm-hmm. But yeah, this version just wants. This is the god of war, Heracles. The I'm going yes. to kill all the gods, Heracles. Honestly, that's awesome. I mean, terrible that this happened, but awesome. There's a Mongo Strange fake, so you probably get some good artwork out of I've, this. I've been looking at it. That's why That's why I've been his, sitting here going, wood tap. <laughs> like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. okay. So, yeah, you saw that there. When talking about servants that can beat Gilgamesh, Alcides' name is one of the first to come up consistently. Mm -hmm. He and Gilgamesh had a rather famous fight where he managed to put Gilgamesh on the back foot at one point and was able to stand toe-to-toe with him until their fight was interrupted by Pale Rider. Alcides straight up calls Gilgamesh weak and encourages him to use Enuma Elish, as that is the one weapon Gilgamesh has that even gives him a chance at beating Alcides. Granted now... Part of the reason why Gilgamesh was on the back foot was that Her- or Alcides had the element of surprise on his side. But that feat alone is enough to cement him in a lot of fans' mind as one of the strongest servants we've seen to date. I, 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 love, how, I love how Fate's version of uh, Would It Kill Goku is Can It Fight Gilgamesh? <laughs> I like I I know that there are servants who can defeat Gilgamesh, mm-hmm. but it's still in my like I don't maybe it's just my perception, but my perception is that there's there's just a can it fight Gilgamesh. One of the things that makes him more capable of fighting Gilgamesh than normal Herc is he has denounced the gods. So guess what he doesn't have that Gilgamesh no longer has a counter for divinity. The, yep, divinity. The, those chains of heaven aren't holding him anymore. Yeah. But there's more to it. But that gets into his noble phantasms, which King's are order. extensive. Oh, yeah, that's a lot of noble... Jeez, okay, well, let's start from King's Order. So Alcides has lost God Hand. Uh-huh. You'd think that's a bad thing, but because... No, no, because he reject- gains the t- the 12 labors shit. Yeah, when you get rid of the immortality God that he received by completing the 12 labors, all he has are the products of those 12 labors. Hey, the pelt of the Divine Beast, remember? I said that the, the Nemean Lion's pelt could not be penetrated by mortal weapons, so Heracles had to tear the Nemean Lion apart with his hands. So mm-hmm. if he's wearing the pelt... So, yeah, he's got 12 different noble phantasms, only a handful of which we have named. Let's see, Chiron's Immortality... So a single okay. resurrection, which he obtained from Chiron, who gave it to him after accidentally pricking himself with an arrow tipped from the venom of the Hydra. Goddess of War is the belt of Hippolyta, stole, uh, given to Hippolyta by Ares that he stole during that task. I do want to make a note on Pelt of the Divine Beast, because that's another reason Gilgamesh oh, had yeah. trouble with him. was because... Oh, everything in his treasury is man-made. Yeah. Yeah, so nothing would pierce the pelt. No, obviously. That's... <laughs> and then he has... Nine lives... Yeah, he has two more noble phantasms separate from the remaining nine or from the remaining nine unnamed ones in King's Order, nine lives. And then he has Reincarnation Pandora, which is the kicker. Alcides can just steal other noble phantasms. If Gilgamesh were to actually draw Ea out, Alcides could yoink it from him at his death. Um he downright steals Jack the Ripper's noble phantasm from him, letting him transform into a pseudo demon. I love it. I love it. 
Yes. We should read another volume of Strange Fake. We really need to read another <laughs> volume of Strange Fake. Why have you not given me more Strange Fake? Where is it, Nicknack? <laughs> I'm waiting. <laughs> so, we do have one more version of Heracles when you're done with the Alcides here. I don't want to be done with Alcides, but okay. I see Heracles Megalos. Is this a giant version of him? Yes. <laughs> So this is a right. boss-only form of Heracles in FGO called Megalos, and oh boy, the idea here is to just inject more Berserker into Berserker Heracles. <laughs> I can see that. Uh, it is achieved only through forcibly modifying his spirit origin, and so far this has been done by Scheherazade using a Demon Pillar's power combined Jesus. with her noble phantasm, and then Taito no Kagekyo using Kichi Hogan's mallet managed to basically embigify him using the, uh, using the, the aging up function. Uh... And then there's a couple more minor appearances here and there. I love that. His appearance remains the same across all um, variations of him, except his size and composition varies. Mm -hmm. Normally, he's just very, very big Herc, and that's big by Heracles standards. Yeah. But we've also seen a kaiju-sized version of him, and at another point, he was made of chocolate. I'm going to be honest. Heracles the size of a kaiju is a horrifying prospect. You know how they had to beat him in that event? How? They had to go inside him and kill him from the inside out. Oh, so they had to Thanos it. Yep. Literally. Um, regardless, though, he is treated as an as a servant enemy, and but less as a beatable enemy. And in the chapter he was introduced in, he was more of an unstoppable natural disaster whenever he decided to attack. I love that. Um, and he's not a, a beast of destruction or whatever? Beasts are also got, they also have those on a bunch really of shit, qualifying yeah. things. Also, he doesn't have the wide destructibility of it. He's just like, okay, big destructive Godzilla force. So, I do have a few more notes on his abilities. Oh, okay. So, everything, including his divinity, is enhanced. He can take out most servants with a single strike, and it takes the strongest berserk force known to fate to even hold him off. And that force is Penthesilia, believing she's fighting Achilles. Uh, and then he still has God Hand. We don't know much about what his skills and noble phantasms entail, but we know he still has God Hand. <laughs> Jesus. All right, so you've given me a fight, I yep. see. Oh, Jolter versus Megalos. Who wins? Yeah. Well, was, they pick Jolter as a servant, yeah, so I know. Jolter. Yeah, but still. Actually, no, this fight ends in a draw in this specific fight of him. You fight him multiple times across the chapter. Ah. Uh. Is that my computer lagging, or is it the video lagging? It could be either or. Cool. Then I'm just gonna... Refresh that real quick. Just in case. It was my computer. <laughs> no, it's the video. Okay, never mind. Could just be the game itself lagging, because that is a big thing on screen there. Yeah. He's so big. Oy. Not the most professional video, but I had to find one that wasn't trying to insert Heaven's Skill soundtrack behind it. Yeah. He's just big Oonga Boonga, isn't he? You know what? I... Kudos. Big Oonga Boonga. I... Oh boy, his gallery is gonna be massive, isn't it? Aww. It's gonna have a fair amount of... Yeah. Alright, let's go see if there's any extra art first. There is some. Awesome. Okay, so that we'll see later, but... Yep. <laughs> oh, Berserker, Caster, Saber. Oh, these are the characters designed by the same person. Yeah. Okay, that's Azusa's characters. Aww. Look at that. All right, we're done. Yeah, we're done with extra art. Oh, he's got an arcade craft essence. Oh. Yeah, heaven's feel. Okay. Gotter Damarung. So that's him fighting Sir. Yes, I can see that. All right. Actually, not as many as I thought. It's also even extra not that bad because this is the only FGO variant we have of him, so... That is true. 
I say before All we right. get a strange fate collab announced with Al City's summonable as we're on break. Castle of Snow, temporary resting place of the sword. The girl is gentle yet proud, and this is her memory of one winter. So this just gives in game the effect is to just give him God Hand in game, a, a mini version of it, but it's still I love that you get the general gist of it. This is the Aramanthian boar. Wild boar prized headgear. A boar's hide turned into a hoodie. It's warm. Wearing it might make you a little berserk. You should never forget your wild nature. Yeah. Hey, formal dress. You gotta lay on him. That is not very formal. He's got buster uh, shorts and a pot and a, or in a watermelon. A giant, that's a big watermelon. It's a buster, a spotter. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we know he's in the arcade art. We saw it. All right. Pure Destruction. Is that Jalter? Yep. So that's another Heaven's Feel tie in C. Oh. The only truth of this battle is the need for destruction, but perhaps that is what fills those looking on with a sense bordering on reverence. Maybe it is. Miniature Argo! Oh my goodness! There are characters on that Argo. Yep, this is probably Jason's, but yeah, it's he's in there. There are characters to the side of that Argo. A return gift from Jason. Yeah. Okay, let's skip that. Heroic Spirit Travel Journal. Oh, this is voiced. Hold on. I think he was just jumping. <laughs> um, it is on Yakushima Island, Kagoshima. Lovely. Herc in the wild. He's in the background. Oh, this is Heaven's Feel. Yep. Yeah, because there's black and... Yeah. Okay. Caldea Fighter. Hey. We know who that be. It's Martha. Cosplaying people. Uh, but I did read this, I think, for Martha. So yeah. I will skip that. Princess of Fine Clothes. Aw, it's a koi fish. And he's in Japanese traditional wear. Her purity is unmatched. Her nobility is unmatched. Refrain, refrain. All must bow before the small one. None can raise their head. The one who sits upon the throne. Brighter than five colors. She is the lord of our castle. That is not Erisfield, is it? That's a no, CE that's... for a totally different person? That's... I'm going to say it's 90% Ilya. Okay. But I don't know that person. Yeah, you don't... It's Ilya, but it's not... You you know how the gist works in Fate. We'll get back to that. Yeah. All right. Heroic Spirit Encounter Bazaka. Oh, it's... Oh, it's the cropped illustration from here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. These it's are a not... recent thing where they just yeah. gave out a bunch of, like, CEs based off the CGs from Fate Stand. Smooth sailing. I love that they're crafting with evil eyes. Jason. He's got Jason written on his bracelet. Um... That, that is a very Mediterranean and Eastern European thing. So, like, I grew up with evil eyes in the house. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, I actually brought a bunch back for all my friends when I came back from Greece. Not because it's, like, a touristy thing to do, but, like, genuinely, I grew up with evil eyes in almost every room in the house, right? Like, you wear these to prevent people from cursing you, um, to prevent from all these sort of bad things. It's, it's like one of those things that's just kind of ingrained into certain cultures that people just do and you pass it down to your children and your children. I'm very used to having evil eyes in the house. So I love seeing evil eyes like this because uh, that's really cool. よし、そいつもいただいていくとするか。いや、水難はともかくとして、ジョナンについては保証しかねるんだが。あと、この糸の送り先はもう決まっているんだ。That one's hurt. We sew through the waves, stitch by stitch, to prevent our precious bonds from fraying. It doesn't matter how many amulets you have. Storms are part of being a hero like me. Okay, I guess I'll take those as well. Well, aside from water damage, I can't guarantee against women damage. I can't wait. Also, I've already decided where to send this thread. Hercules, in his grunting, is saying, Mmm, it's difficult. I wish you all the best on your voyage. Yeah, because it's, it's a reference to the Argonauts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Oh. And that's, that's it. Please. I'm honestly surprised we didn't have more in the uh, the back end of the. Oh yeah, because he's in Jason's April Fool's art. Yeah. That's the character I don't know yet. Yep. Yeah. I love that. But yeah, you got to see more Heracles than just Heracles today. So much Heracles. I'm surprised. I really thought this was going to be like significantly longer on Fate's End. So like, I'm a little disappointed. I kind of wish we had more versions of him with more They're stuff. They're only kind of recently getting around to doing a lot, giving Heracles a lot more. Because Berserker Heracles satisfies the vast majority of people. He does, but I, I really would love to see like more. Yeah. You know? Like I'd love to see an FGO, like properly summonable... Um, Archer Herc with like stuff ascribed to him. That would be really cool. Mm -hmm. Or see Alcides as summonable, that sort of thing. We're waiting on it. They they said the Strange Fate collab was waiting until the novels were done, and the novels only have one more volume left. Yeah. So 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 about Fate Strange Fake, Micknack. I I can get you the PDF anytime. Please do. <laughs> okay. Please do. <laughs> I, I the the more the more I hear about things in Strange Fake that I haven't gotten to, the more I want to read more of Strange Fake. Yeah, I don't think I told you there was another like seven servants besides the ones you we've seen you did already. not tell me that, and and you <laughs> you knew that not telling me that what you you knew. Anyways, um, I don't have a hint for the next servant, so you better. <sighs> That'd be way too obvious. Honestly, if I had to rate the next servant out of five, I'd rate it zero. Okay. I don't understand that reference, but I'm sure all of you Fate fans will. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.